Hello, my name is Jessica Dean, and I am a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. I focus heavily on DevOps from the ops perspective, and even more shocking, I have a deep passion for Apple, Linux, and open source. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build almost anything, Mac, Linux, and Windows builds, all from within Visual Studio Team Services. Now, with my background of Linux system administration, deep engagement in local open source communities, and even having three Apple certifications, I am really excited about this video. I was also super surprised to discover how easy it is to configure VSTS to handle even Mac and Linux-based builds. For today's demo, we are going to show how we can truly build nearly anything, regardless of platform. First, we will build a mobile iPhone app using a hosted Mac agent. Next, we will build an ASP.NET web front end on a hosted Linux agent, and then build a Docker image, which we will push to Azure Container Registry. Finally, we will build an ASP.NET Core app with SSDT, or SQL Server Data Tools database project on a hosted Windows agent. Let's go check it out. So for this demo, I have pre-created a project to show you with three different build definitions, a Mac build, a Linux build, and a Windows build. So I'm currently under my project that I've created in my Visual Studio collection. Let's start with our Mac iOS build. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that definition so we can take a look and see how I configured that. First, under tasks, we'll see that there's three sections. There's the process section, there's the get sources section, and then there's a mobile or phase section here. If we start with process, we'll see that I named that. It's a full system, Mac iOS is the name of that build. And the agent queue I've chosen is my hosted Mac agent. I could also choose Linux or Windows for Visual Studio. And if I have a private agent, I could choose that. That's my build agent. That's the system that's going to actually build my IPA for this iOS. So I've already selected Mac, and now I can move on to get sources. I have imported the code for this project already into a Git repository within VSTS, and I'm going to use the master branch. Next, we're gonna move on to the phases. The phases is where, or the agent phase, is where we're going to set up our foundation for our build. It's where we add in tasks. If I wanna add a new task, I would click the plus sign here, and I can start typing tasks. I can type in Apple, and I can see that I can install a certificate and a provisioning profile. By choosing to add in a certificate and provisioning profile, I can actually set up my environment in advance. So I've already predefined these tasks. So let's go with the first one. The first one is I'm installing a, an Apple certificate and I have my P12 already uploaded. Now let's pause right here. I have it uploaded into secure files so that I don't have to check my P12 or my provisioning profile into source control. To get to secure files, it's actually in my library under the build and release tab in Visual Studio. So let's open that up in a new tab and take a quick look. So under library, we see two tabs here. We see variable groups and we see secure files. So I can see in secure files, I've actually uploaded a few of them. I've uploaded a provisioning profile and a P12 certificate that I plan to use for this particular build. So now if I go back over to the phase project and the task, underneath the P12 certificate, I don't have to enter a file path. I actually have a little drop down menu that'll ask me and prompt me which certificate do I wanna select. I'm gonna select my, pe my people tracker P12. I also can reference the password in an environment variable. Variables are defined under the variables part of your build stage. Next, we'll take a look at the Apple provisioning profile. Similar to the cert, I also have a drop-down menu. 
I do not have to enter a password for my provisioning profile, and I can check the box to remove the profile after build, just to make sure everything's nice and clean. Next, I can replace tokens for my iOS, and I'm specifying the source path and the target file patterns as my plist files. I can also specify my regex expressions right here underneath the advanced dropdown. The next task is I'm gonna do a new get restore, and I'm specifying my solution file uh, underneath the path to solution, packages.config or project.json. Next, we're gonna go into where we actually build our app. This is where we're going to create the IPA package. The display name I've chosen is to build Xamarin iOS. I've specified my solution file. If I don't know where it's located, I can click on the ellipses right here, and I can go ahead and find that solution file. Next, I'm gonna specify my build configuration for the configuration that I'm using. I'm gonna check the box to clean and create an app package because I want that IPA. If I did not previously install an Apple certificate or provisioning profile, and if I didn't want to use secure files for whatever reason, I could always check my P12 certificate and my provisioning profile into source control and override the certificate and provisioning profile I wish to use for this build underneath signing and provisioning. So if I drop that down, I can choose to override and specify an individual certificate, enter a password or variable for that password and the profile here. We are already installing it in our environment as part of our build tasks, so we can ignore that particular section. Finally, we're gonna copy the files so that we can publish that into our release stage, which we're not gonna cover in this demo, but just to show you to copy files, I'm gonna name this task copy files. I don't need to specify a source folder. I just need to tell it the cop contents I wanna copy is my IPA, any DLLs, and the release notes.txt, as well as my testcloud.exe. The target folder I'm gonna copy it to is my build.artifacts staging directory environment variable. Next, I'm gonna publish that, and I'm gonna publish, again, the build.artifacts staging directory into an artifact name of mobile, and I could pull that and reference that in a release stage. So let's go ahead and press Q and see how this builds. Great, we see that build 106 has started and we can watch it as it builds our iOS app using VSTS. So we see that it's assigned an agent and it's starting the hosted agent. It's initializing the job and it's installing our Apple certificate and now our provisioning profile. Next, it's getting the sources that we're gonna use for this build. To replace the tokens already, and now we're on to new get restore. After new get finishes, we've now moved into where it's actually building our iOS mobile iPhone app. Great, and so it completed the build task, and now it's copying our files. And now it's publishing our files so that we can use those in release. Great, and so now I see that it completed. One thing I do wanna highlight here is the last two tasks, the post job, it actually removed the Apple provisioning profile and cert after it completed the build and the publish. I thought that was pretty neat. So that way it kind of cleans up our environment and makes things nice and, nice and secure. So that's how you build an iOS app using VSTS. Let's go back to our build definitions and take a look at the next build definition. The next one we're gonna show is how to do a Linux build from within VSTS. So let's take a look at the definition I've defined. From here, similar to the Mac build, there's three parts. There's process, there's get sources, and there's a phase or a web phase that we've defined. For process, we're gonna choose the hosted Linux preview agent this time because we're gonna be building a Linux web front end. Next, we're still using the same sources from the same repo. And I've already, as you know, imported those in. Finally, going on to the phases, this particular app is a .NET Core 2.0 app. 
So I'm gonna install .NET Core SDK version 2.0. I've already added that task in. Next, I'm gonna run .NET Restore, Build, and Publish. Each step is similar in the sense that they're all .NET Core steps, just the command that I enter is different. So I'm gonna restore, and I'm gonna specify the csproj file, or the location to that for the project. Then under Build, I'm gonna specify that same location. And you'll notice here that there's also build arguments of build configuration that's handled under variables. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then we have .NET publish. So the command I'm running is publish, again, still specifying my project file, and then build configuration and staging directory as far as the arguments. Finally, from what's built, I'm gonna go ahead and build an image. I have added in my Azure Container Registry, and I've specified the action as build an image. I'm also telling it where the Docker file it can use is, and any build context and image name. The image name is my Azure Container Registry with the name of the project and the build ID. If I wanna publish or build more than one build ID, I can add additional tags here, and I can also check the box to include the latest tag. Real quick, I have already pre-added in different services I've already added in a Docker registry or my Azure Container Registry, and I've also already added in an Azure subscription. If I hadn't, I could simply click on this Manage button, we'll open it in a new tab, and we'll take a look at the services I've added. So you'll see, I've added in a few, but for this particular definition, all I need is my subscription, which is right here, my Microsoft Azure subscription. I've specified the name and the subscription I've referenced. I've also added in my, my Docker registry or my Azure Container Registry. If we click Update Service, you can see the Docker Registry address. I've named it whatever. You can choose to enter the, the name accordingly. And then I've already added in my credentials. Great. So if I go back over here, we'll take a look at variables. The variables I've added in is, again, you can see the build configuration. I'm specifying release for my .NET command. I'm also specifying that I want to turn debugging on the cert password I've encrypted. And then I've already entered in my OS ID for the, uh, for the iOS build. And I've also entered in any additional passwords. Going back over to tasks, it uses the same variables, by the way, because we're all under the same project. And it's just going to attach those variables for each build definition in case I need to call that. Now under the push image, here's where we're gonna push it to that Azure Container Registry. So I have my Azure Container Registry added in. I have my Azure subscription selected. I've also selected it. It knows that I have an Azure Container Registry within that subscription. So if we see the drop-down menu, I can choose that registry. And the action I'm gonna tell it to do is push. From push, I'm specifying the same image name that I referenced in build. And I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and push both the build ID and the latest tag. That way I can use that image in my release stage, which we won't demo at this time, but let's go ahead and see this build. I'm leaving it on the hosted agent queue as being hosted Linux preview, the master branch, and we don't have any specific variables defined for this particular definition. Let's hit Q. And great, 107 has been queued. Let's check it out. So it's initialized the agent, it's starting the job, it's getting my sources. It's installing .NET Core SDK 2.0. It's running .NET Restore. It's starting the .NET Build command. And now we're doing .NET Publish. After that completed, now we're gonna build our Docker image. And we're pushing that image right into Azure Container Registry. And it's doing any post job cleanup, and there you have it. Our Linux build succeeded, great. Now let's go over to our last build, which is Windows. So 
So we see the full system Windows web build definition right here. Let's take a look at how we've set that up. Just like the other two, we have three parts. We have process, get sources, and then our phase tasks. Under process, this time I'm gonna use a hosted Visual Studio 2017 agent. The sources I'm gonna use is still the same repository with the same files. And then for the phases, I'm gonna do new get restore for the first command. I'm just gonna run the restore command and the solution file I reference. I'm gonna do a Visual Studio build solution and I reference that solution file here. Again, if I didn't know where that file was, I could hit the ellipses, drop down my repository, and scroll down until I found the solution file I need. The Visual Studio version I want to reference is latest, and then I can add in any, any MS Build arguments under this particular field. You'll notice here also that there's build platform and build configuration. Both of those are environment variables. If we go over to the variable section, that's where we see our build platform, which specifies any CPU, and our build configuration. So let's go back to tasks. We can see that we can run any unit tests that we need, and that's where we're gonna select test using test assemblies. We specify the paths of where those test assemblies can be located and the folder that they can search as well as any test filter criteria. After that completes, we're gonna go ahead and publish our web artifacts. We're gonna name our artifacts for release that we can reference at a later time, drop, and we're gonna copy root from our agent build directory. So it's gonna take everything right from build, it's gonna copy everything that ends in a .zip, backpack, and publish profiles, Docker file, bin folder, et cetera, and put that into a drop folder for our artifacts that we can use as part of continuous deployment. So let's go ahead and hit Q and watch it build. 108 has started, so let's take a look. Great, so we see that it initialized the agent, it's starting the job, it's getting our sources. It's already running NuGet Restore to restore packages. Now it's building our solution. It's running our unit tests that we defined, and it's publishing our artifacts that we can use at a later time when we configure continuous deployment, or if we were to configure continuous deployment. And it finished the post-job cleanup. So there you have it. Again, today's video was just to show you how you can build. So we really wanted to focus on the CI part of VSTS for any platform. You can build almost anything, regardless of platform, whether that be Mac, Linux, or Windows, all using Visual Studio Team Services. This really shows how VSTS can completely handle your continuous integration stages, build, UI test, et cetera, with any platform. With my deep passion for both the Linux and Apple communities, I can't tell you how excited I am to see Microsoft add new features like this. Thanks for watching.